Section twenty six of Modern Magic. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Lynn Thompson. Modern Magic A Practical Treatise on the Art of Conjuring by Professor Louis Hoffman. Tricks with Handkerchiefs, Part One we have already discussed a good many tricks in which handkerchiefs are employed in one way or another the present chapter will be devoted to those feats in which the handkerchief forms the sole or principal object of the illusion where practicable the handkerchief used should always be a borrowed one so as to exclude the idea of preparation and in borrowing it will occasionally be necessary to use a little tact in order to make certain of getting the right article for your purpose without admitting by asking specially for any particular kind of handkerchief the limited extent of your powers thus whenever the trick depends upon the substitution of a handkerchief of your own it is necessary that the borrowed handkerchief should be of a plain white so as not to have too marked an individuality and of a small size so as to be easily palmed or otherwise concealed these desiderata you may secure without disclosing that they are desiderata by asking if a lady will oblige you with a handkerchief ladies handkerchiefs being invariably white and of small size if a lace handkerchief which would be inconveniently distinguishable from your substitute is offered you may pretend to fear the risk of injuring the lace and on that account to prefer a less valuable article in knot tricks on the contrary you should if possible use a silk handkerchief which from its softer nature will be found more tractable than cambric we will begin by describing a couple of little flourishes which may be incidentally introduced in the performance of more ambitious tricks and which will sometimes be found useful in occupying the attention of the audience for a moment or two while some necessary arrangement is being made behind the scenes for the purpose of the principal illusion the first we will call the handkerchief that cannot be tied in a knot the performer having borrowed a handkerchief pulls it this way and that as if to ascertain its fitness for the purpose of the trick finally twisting the handkerchief into a sort of loose rope he throws the two ends one over the other as in the ordinary mode of tying and pulls smartly but instead of a knot appearing as would naturally be expected in the middle of the handkerchief it is pulled out quite straight this is a very curious handkerchief he remarks i can't make a knot in it the process is again and again repeated but always with the same result the secret is as follows the performer before pulling the knot tight slips his left thumb as shown in figure 107 beneath such portion of the tie as is a continuation of the end held in the same hand the necessary arrangement of the hands and handkerchief though difficult to explain in writing will be found quite clear upon a careful examination of the figure the handkerchief that will not burn this may be used either separately or in conjunction with the foregoing the performer taking the handkerchief asks if it will burn the owner naturally answers that she has no doubt it will suppose we try says the performer and taking the handkerchief by two of its corners he draws it three or four times obliquely upwards across the flame of a lighted candle without its receiving the slightest injury there is really no mystery whatever about this although to those who have never tried it it appears very surprising and the spectators are generally persuaded that you have somehow substituted another handkerchief made incombustible by chemical means the performer has only to take care not to allow the handkerchief to rest motionless while in contact with the flame in the act of drawing the handkerchief over the candle the contact of any given part of the flame is so momentary that it is barely warmed in its passage you must however take care not to attempt this trick 
with a handkerchief that has been scented as any remains of spirit about it would cause it to ignite instantly and place you in a rather awkward position where a substitute handkerchief has to be burned in the course of a trick it is by no means a bad plan to exhibit with the substitute which the audience take to be the original this phenomenon of supposed incombustibility and appearing to grow careless from repeated success at last to allow the handkerchief to catch fire if you can by such means induce the audience to believe for the time being that the burning was an accident you will the more astonish them by the subsequent restoration the vanishing knot for this trick you must use a silk handkerchief twisting it rope fashion and grasping it in the middle with both hands you request one of the spectators to tie the two ends together he does so but you tell him that he has not tied them half tight enough and you yourself pull them still tighter a second and third knot are made in the same way the handkerchief being drawn tighter by yourself after each knot is made finally taking the handkerchief and covering the knots with the loose part you hand it to someone to hold breathing on it you request him to shake out the handkerchief when all the knots are found to have disappeared when the performer apparently tightens the knot he in reality only strains one end of the handkerchief grasping it above and below the knot this pulls that end of the handkerchief out of the twisted condition in the knot into a straight line round which the other end of the handkerchief remains twisted in other words converts the knot into a slip knot after each successive knot he still straightens this same end of the handkerchief this end being thus made straight would naturally be left longer than the other which is twisted round and round it this tendency the performer counteracts by drawing it partially back through the slip knot at each pretended tightening when he finally covers over the knots which he does with the left hand he holds the straightened portion of the handkerchief immediately behind the knots between the first finger and thumb of the right hand and therewith in the act of covering over the knots draws this straightened portion completely out of the slip knot some performers among whom we may mention herman make this feat still more effective by borrowing half a dozen handkerchiefs and allowing them all to be tied end to end by the spectators after each knot the professor pretends to examine it asking what kind of a knot do you call this sir and meanwhile pulls it into the required condition the joined handkerchiefs are then placed one upon the other on a chair or in a hat and are immediately afterwards shown to be separate the student must be on his guard against one particular kind of knot which cannot be pulled into the condition above named we allude to the very common mode of tying in which the two ends to be tied are placed side by side and tied simultaneously in a single knot the employment of this kind of knot may generally be avoided by holding the two ends to be tied at a tolerably wide angle so that they cannot very well be drawn parallel if however a spectator appears determined to tie this particular knot it is better to allow him to do so and then remark as the knots are tied by yourselves ladies and gentlemen you can have little doubt that they are all fair however for the greater satisfaction of all present i will ask some gentleman to be good enough to untie one of them which will give a fair criterion to the time it would take in a natural way to get rid of the remainder so saying you hand the knot in question to be untied and in subsequently giving the ends to be again joined select a more accommodating person to tie them as the tricks which follow mainly depend upon the substitution of a second handkerchief we shall in the first place describe two or three modes of effecting the necessary exchange with and without the aid of apparatus to exchange a borrowed handkerchief for a substitute have the substitute handkerchief tucked under your waistcoat at the left side so as to be out of sight but within easy reach of your hand receive the borrowed handkerchief in your right hand and as you left wheel to your table to place it thereon 
tuck it under your waistband on the right side and at the same moment pull out with the other hand the substitute and throw the latter on the table the substitute handkerchief which the audience take to be the real one being thus left in full view you may without exciting any suspicion retire with the genuine one and dispose of it as may be necessary for the purpose of your trick you may however sometimes desire merely to gain possession of a borrowed handkerchief or to place it within reach of your assistant without yourself leaving the apartment in this case the substitute may be placed as before but on your right side receiving the borrowed handkerchief in your right hand you hold it loosely hanging down between the second and third or third and fourth fingers this leaves the thumb and first finger free and these you quickly pull down as you turn to go to your table the substitute you then have both handkerchiefs held openly in the same hand but both being of like appearance the audience take them to be one only passing behind your table you let fall the borrowed handkerchief upon the servante and throw the substitute upon the table a very audacious and generally successful mode of effecting the change is as follows taking the handkerchief and pressing it into a moderately small compass the performer says now i am going to make this handkerchief disappear there are plenty of ways of doing it i'll show you one or two this is professor de jones's method he just turns round so to put the handkerchief on the table performer turns accordingly but meanwhile the handkerchief is gone ah you were too sharp for me you saw me poke it up my sleeve quite right here it is i see professor jones's method wouldn't have any chance with you this is professor de smith's method he turns as before the handkerchief is gone again not far though for here it is turning back breast of coat and showing handkerchief Professor de Robinson does it like this he turns away for an instant and tucks handkerchief under waistband Here it is you see under the waistcoat pulls it out again Now you may very well imagine that if I had intended to have used one of these methods myself I shouldn't have explained them You will find that my plan is quite a different one when I want to get rid of a handkerchief I just take it to the candle and set it on fire so holds handkerchief over candle and sets light to it or I place it in such and such a piece of apparatus etc etc on the first two occasions of showing where the handkerchief is placed the performer really does exhibit the genuine article but at the third pretended feint though he really does tuck it under his waistband he pulls out again not the same handkerchief but a substitute placed there beforehand the action is so natural and so much in harmony with his previous acts that not one in a hundred will suspect that he has thereby really changed the handkerchief the mode of exchange last described ingenious as it is has one serious drawback viz that it gives the audience a clue which it is better that they should not have and suggests suspicions and conjectures which but for such a clue they would never have thought of to an acute mind even such a slight hint as this will suggest enough to destroy half the effect of any subsequent trick in which a similar process of disappearance or exchange is employed and even in the case of less intelligent spectators it will tend to diminish the prestige of the performer by showing by what shallow artifices an illusion may be produced there are two or three pieces of apparatus for effecting the, the exchange of a handkerchief by mechanical means a very good one is that known as the washerwoman's bottle in conjunction with which we will take the opportunity of describing the very effective trick known as the locked and corded box the washerwoman's bottle is a simple and inexpensive piece of apparatus of frequent use in handkerchief tricks it appears it is an ordinary black bottle save that it has a rather shorter neck and wider mouth than the generality of such vessels in reality it is made of tin japanned black and is divided by a vertical partition commencing just below the mouth into two compartments one of these has a bottom but the other has none 
forming in fact a mere passage through the bottle in the bottomed compartment is placed beforehand a piece of cambric or dummy handkerchief also about a glassful of port wine or some other liquor of similar color the performer borrows a lady's handkerchief pretending that he is obliged to fetch some other article for the purpose of the trick he says as if struck by a sudden thought but i mustn't run away with a handkerchief or you might fancy that i have tampered with it in some way where shall i put it ah the very thing here's a bottle belonging to my washerwoman which she left behind her the last time she came it's sure to be clean for she is a most particular old lady we often hear of a lady carrying a bottle in her handkerchief why not a handkerchief in a bottle first madam please see that i have not exchanged the handkerchief right is it well then here goes for the bottle standing behind his table in full view of the spectators he stuffs the borrowed handkerchief into the bottle ramming it down with his wand in so doing he grasps the bottle with his left hand around its base which he rests on the edge of the table nearest to himself in such a manner about half the bottom projects over the edge when he places the handkerchief in the bottle he places it in the open compartment and pushes it with his wand right through the bottle into his left hand if he desires to obtain personal possession of it or lets it fall on the servant if it is to be carried off by his assistant we will assume for our present purpose that he simply pushes it into his left hand it is easy to get rid of it into the pochette on the same side he now places a bottle in the centre of the table but in doing so he pretends to hear a sound of liquid therein i hope the bottle was empty he remarks i never thought about that he shakes the bottle and the liquid therein is distinctly audible good gracious he exclaims i am afraid i have ruined your handkerchief he now pours the liquid into a glass and then putting his fingers inside the bottle he pulls out the prepared piece of cambric which of course is wet and stained leaving it hanging from the neck of the bottle he advances to the owner and expresses his regret at the accident but the audience who begin to suspect that the pretended mistake is really a part of the trick insists that the handkerchief shall be restored in its original condition the performer feigns embarrassment but at last says well ladies and gentlemen i cannot dispute the justice of your observations the handkerchief certainly ought to be returned clean as at first and as my washerwoman has been the cause of the mischief she is the proper person to repair it will you excuse my stopping the entertainment for an hour or two while i go to fetch her you object to the delay well then i will bring her here by spiritualistic means a la mrs guppy pardon me one moment he retires and returns with a square box and the magic pistol placing the box on the table and making a few mysterious passes over it with his wand he says in the deepest tones spirit of mrs tubbs i command you to pass into this box there to remain until you have repaired the damage which your carelessness has caused then taking the saturated cambric from the bottle he crams it into the pistol and retiring to the farthest position of the stage fires at the box laying down the pistol and taking up the box he advances to the owner of the handkerchief and offering her the key begs her to unlock it she does so expecting to find her handkerchief but finds instead a second box this and four or five others in succession are opened and in the innermost is found the handkerchief folded and ironed as if newly returned from the wash with the reader's present knowledge it would be almost superfluous to tell him that the operator avails himself of his momentary absence to damp and fold the handkerchief and to press it with a cold iron if a hot one can be obtained so much the better but there is no absolute necessity for it having done this he places it in the square nest of boxes and closing them returns to the audience the magic pistol has already been described where an assistant is employed the performer merely pushes the handkerchief through the bottle on to the servante 
as already mentioned and the assistant passing behind the table on some pretext or other carries it off and places it in the nest of boxes while the audience are occupied by the pretended discovery of wine in the bottle the trick in this form appears even more surprising inasmuch as the performer does not leave the stage at all and the box is brought in and placed on the table by a person who to all appearance has never had the handkerchief even for a moment in his possession in order still further to heighten the effect of the trick the handkerchief is sometimes caused to reappear in the innermost of a nest of boxes which has throughout the entertainment been hung up in full view of the audience and the outermost of which is carefully corded and sealed the performer in this case after firing the supposed box for the audience are of course ignorant that there are more than one directs his assistant to take it down from the elevated position and place it on the table cutting the cords and opening the box he produces from it another corded like the first from this second box he produces another smaller box of an ornamental character the square nest of boxes above mentioned this he hands to the owner of the handkerchief with a request that she will open it and the result is as already described the trick in this form is one of the very best exhibited on the stage and yet as indeed are most of the best feats it is performed by the simplest possible means the outer box is an ordinary deal box bona fide sealed and corded but the second though equally genuine in appearance has no bottom and the cord though apparently quite complete does not cross beneath the box which is in fact nothing more than a wooden shell or cover with a lid to it when the performer takes out this second box and places it on the table he tilts it forward for a moment and in that moment slips the nest of boxes which is placed in readiness for the servante underneath it immediately afterwards raising the lid and taking out the nest as if it had all along been contained therein it only remains to explain the mode by which the nest of boxes with the handkerchief therein is placed upon the servante some performers employ the rather too transparent expedient of making the assistant bring in then and there a small round table behind which on a servante of its own is placed the closed nest of boxes a better plan where the size of the nest permits is to have it placed open before the performance commences on the servante of the centre table it is then an easy matter for the performer or his assistant as the case may be to slip in the folded handkerchief and close the boxes the remainder of the trick proceeding as already described some performers use for the purpose of this trick a special mechanical table which by means of a lifting apparatus itself introduces the nest of boxes through a trap into the bottomless box without the necessity of tilting the latter end of section twenty six